C. E. G. Monuments of Washington's Patriotism, M. W. P. Ed. 3. Pub. Trustees, 1841, pp. 8588. The following is taken from Documents in Reading in American Government, DRAG, by John M. Matthews, Macmillan Company, 1928, pp. 87, 88, 91, 92, 250. There is no provision in the national constitution for political parties. Apparently the founders of our government felt that parties were not only unnecessary but undesirable. To the efficacy and permanency of our union, a government for the whole is indispensable. No alliances however strict between the parts can be an adequate substitute. They serve to organize factions, to give it an artificial and extraordinary force to put in place of the delegated will of the nation, the will of the party. Often a small but artful and enterprising minority of the community, and according to the alternate triumph of different parties, unprincipled men will be enabled to subvert the power of the people and to usurp for themselves the reins of government destroying afterward the very engines, which have lifted them to unjust dominion. One method of assault may be to effect, in the form of the Constitution, alterations which will impair the energy of the system, and thus to undermine what cannot be directly heard. Party candidate is, in no real sense a part of the manner of holding the election. This does not depend upon the scheme by which candidates are put forward, does not directly affect the manner of holding the election. We cannot conclude that the authority to control party primaries or conventions for designating candidates was bestowed on Congress by the grant of power to regulate the manner of holding elections. The framers of the Constitution did not ascribe to them of any such meaning. A notable tendency in national administration has been the creation by Congress of important agencies independent of the executive departments, multiplied instead of single-headed in form, and vested with a quasi-legistrative and quasi-judicial as well as with strictly administrative functions, in that they shall be representative of various interests, whether political parties, or other group interests. The partisan unlawful and unconstitutional powers that are practiced today, in part, goes back to George Washington as the first magistrate's annexed presidential corporate powers. The following is taken from the senatorial response after GEO, Washington's 1789 inauguration speech. We, the Senate of the United States, congratulate you on the complete organization of the federal government, on your elevation to the office of president, an office highly important by the powers constitutionally annexed to it, in which the appointment is made. MWP, page 79. According to historic scholars, Washington was elected to the office of president, however the above quote clearly indicates that he was appointed to set office. Also, the term annex comes from the Latin words 1, subiacio air, and 2, necto air. Subitere. To be subject to, to lie under, to substitute, and to suborn, greater than, to procure in a secret or underhand manner. Black's Law Dictionary, Vols. 4 7. Nectare, enectare. Of persons, to bind, fetter, enslave, especially for a debt. CNLD, pp. 390 and 576. Annex. The word expresses the idea of joining a smaller or subordinate thing with another, larger, or higher importance. Black's Law Dictionary, Vols. 4-6. The corporate or administrative office and powers of the federal president of the United States is subordinate in nature and not constitutional, thereby allowing said office to be controlled by a democratic partisan government. 3. A. The Revolutionary War. The English word, revolutionary, comes from the Latin word, I, res publica or res publica, and, two, republica conversio. These terms mean for us, we the people, of the Lenape Moorish Monocan United States, realty interest which must be returned back to U.S. Simply put, the word, revolutionary, means to revolve back, and to revolt to recovery, i.e. Sankofa, CNLD, pp. 151, 517, 519, 817. The Revolutionary War in America was, and is, a war via declaration, to proclaim, in writing, the total return, recovery, resurrection and implementation of a sovereign people with self-autonomy with the added purpose of analogously including initially the Maros denizens and eventually the Caucasian white serfs. b. The War of Independence. The word, independence, comes from the Latin word libertas or to be set free. 
The Maros or Mulatto British, French denizens, aka European proprietors, company presidents, precedents equals governors who wanted to be free from the British control of their commerce. However, a colony, plantation, estate or subsidiary corporation does not have the legal right to independently declare its freedom from the parent company, let alone take complete control of its stock. Delivery stock greater than livestock equals the white serfs of Europe, without a company takeover. The British proprietors contractually attach themselves to the takeover company, greater than the Moorish or Maros representatives of the former Monocan United Empire States of America, to assist the Moors in their revolutionary war while the denizens incorporated their war of independence. The United States in Congress assembled agreed to finance these united colonies and to attach the colonies' historic and subordinate Declaration of Independence by the unanimous Declaration of the 13 United States of America, to their a declaration. The Congress, included in the contracts that the governors of the colonies agreed to terminate white slavery by 1807-1808. During the period of the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, Africans from Africa, African Nativity, were set free, and the Zero Original Thirteenth Amendment Art, Section 12 states, The traffic in slaves with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death and the forfeiture of all rights and property of persons engaged therein and the descendants of Africans shall not be citizens of the federal corporation United States. A type of freedom for Africans is also found in SEC. B of the same amendment, Article. Involuntary servitude of Africans, except for crime, shall not be permanently established within the district. Persons held to service or labor for life shall not be denied the sojourn. Even though the British proprietors agreed to free the white slaves, and after the quasi-white slaves fought honorably, they reneged on the contractual obligation. November 8, 1898, the amalgamated Moors, Maros, Mulattoes and Mamluks, illegally, unlawful 1Y and unconstitutionally fraudulently via conspiracy and force, instituted a permanent partisan democracy government, while the real army and navy of the United States was engaged in a military campaign against Panama. Today's administrative de facto democratic partisan government have continued the usurpation via, et al., the Declaration of White Independence, as a pretext to justify the coup d'etat of 1898 and historically calling it, the Wilmington Race Riots. See book entitled, Democracy Betrayed, however, a better title would be The Republic Usurped. The poor white populace, as they were called, did not benefit or actually participate in this overthrow of the constitutional republican form of government. Neither was or are they free from the 14th Amendment, subject to the slavery jurisdiction of the United States. As there are three types of citizens embodied within the Constitution, there are also three types of declarations. Natural born and resident, preamble citizens of the USA, Article 2, Sec. 1, Clause 5, resident and naturalized, nationalized, greater than denizen citizens of the USA, Article 2, Sec. 1, Clause 5 and Art. 1, Section 8, Clause 5. Naturalized and subject to permanent resident aliens citizens of the USA, 13th and 14th Amendments. Three declarations. The authentic and official a declaration, pronounced July 4, 1776 by the United States of America's government, in the Family of Nations, CF, Preamble. The historic and unofficial declaration of independence, attached to and within a declaration, and the jurisdiction of the United States of America, in general, Congress assembled respectively. C.F. Denison. The Democratic and Unconstitutional Declaration of White Independence, November 8, 1898-1929, used as a pretext by the corporate Maros, Mulatto and Blanco conspirators and citizens of the United States government and representatives respectively, and constitutionally ordained thereby initiating the ambiguous growth, authority and empowerment of the post-1929-79 administrative federal agency and management government within the jurisdiction of and belonging to the preamble, constitutional and general United States government, in the family of nations, cf. 13th and 14th men, black, brown, red, yellow one now and white color, c e e t h h h h h h h h h h h the three pre-stated types of nationals of the United States are also defined as follows. A. Preamble, posterity, B. Free persons, Art. 1, Sec. 2, Clause 3, C. Natural born, D. Naturalized resident citizens, 
Articles 1, Sec. 8, Clause 4 and 2, Sec. 1, Clause 5, E, Republican State Citizens, Art. 4, Sec. 4 and Sec. 2, Clause 1 with added privileges and immunities. So written in Amendment 14, Sec. I, Sentence 2. This national citizen can also be found in 8 U.S.C.S., Section 1101, A, 22, A. The denizen or A, free person, including those bound to service for a term of years, greater than word of art, Art, 1, Section 2, Clause 3 and B. Naturalized, nationalized, resident citizens of the United States, Art. I, Section 8, Clause 4 and Article 2, Section 1, Clause 5. Also, this denizen national is attached to the preamble national citizenship according to 8 U.S.C.S. Section 1101A, 22B, via allegiance, and amalgamated within a Declaration of 1776, as the Declaration of Independence, especially the last paragraph of both the authentic A Declaration and the historic Declaration of Independence. A. Three fifths. Persons, Art 1, Section 2, Clause 3. Esoterically a person who is three-fifths human, simply represents an individual who lacks A.R. Lock Angel. Complete control of the spiritual or mental inner senses outwardly described as the physical senses of seeing and hearing. The other three are the sense of smell, taste and touch. Hue or complexion has nothing to do with a person being truly classified as being three-fifths a person, however, anyone who designates themselves as black, brown, red, yellow or white, or allows others the authority to do so is a colored person or person of color, greater than three-fifths human. Colored. It has been held that there is no legal technical signification to the phrase colored person which the courts are bound judicially to know. Pasca v. Douse, 31 Tex, 74. Color. An appearance, semblance or simulacrum, as distinguished from that which is real. Hence, a deceptive appearance, concealing lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. See also colorable, colorable, quote dot dot dot, counterfeit, feigned, having the appearance of truth, counterfeit, to forge, to copy or imitate, without authority or right, and with the view to deceive or defraud, by passing to copy or thing forged for that which is original or genuine. Counterfeit in common parlance signifies a false image or representation. Ellipsis quote dot, Black's Law Dictionary, Vols, 4-6. The terms color, colored and colored persons are word of arts and in their simplest form means a person who is not really human, a human being, notice the dash, it could be a human cat being, dog being, rat being etc., or an individual without the capacity to, or one who does not use his ability to see greater than perceive or hear greater than understand. The Structure of the United States of America. 1. Unit, Stock, Shareholders Greater Than. A. We, the people of the United States of America. B. The posterity of the people of the United States of America. C. The natural born citizens. D. Naturalized, nationalized residents of the United States of America. E. All of the above, analogous, are the beneficiaries of a private public trust association known as the United States of America according to the law of nations, and belonging to the family of nations. 2. The people of the United States are of two types. A the people. The state, nation, as the people of the state of North Carolina, yet and generally used in constitutional law, the entire body of those citizens of a state or nation who are invested with political power for political purposes. This truly applies to all governmental employees and their political corporation. b. The individual natural-born and congressional legislative naturalized residential citizens of the United States. c. The term, posterity, as used in the preamble citizenship simply applies to all the descendants of a person in a direct line to the remotest generation. D. Person. A human being or a natural individual A. Partnership, association, corporations, legal representatives, trustees, etc. The General United States, I-782 Present Seal Government, according to A. The private, national and official flag of the United States, B. The Constitution of, for the United States, of America, and Law of Nations. The Republican form government for the states, guaranteed in and by the United States Constitution. The representative of the sovereign, A. General National United States government and, B. The Republican form of state governments thereof. 
the individual preamble posterity and hakdar, i.e., holders of rights and properties so written in the supreme law of the land. The free inhabitants and qualified voters in the republican form of state government constitutionally ordained and established. Note, the sovereign people and government of both the general national United States and the republican states are preambly included as the prosperity of the United States of America. 3. The trustee of the United States is the 1782 to the present official seal and general United States government, in the family of nations with its private national official flag of the United States. A. The Sovereign Political Association, Corporation Trustee, a.k.a. The Republican General United States Government can only be lawfully and constitutionally represented by number 1, A, B, C, and D, previously mentioned. No other type of citizen can permanently, in the truth, hawk of the law, constitute a constitutional trustee officer. 4. The assistant trustee officers are the Republican form of state governments that are subject to the Allegiance Article, in the Declaration of Rights of All Republican States Constitution. All trustees are constitutionally bound to operate the trust for the beneficiaries, I, A, B, C, D, who are the A. Private preamble individual natural born citizens and the B. Public preamble governments who are persons greater than artificial and corporation citizenship. Our original, sovereign, legitimate and present sealed United States of America government was and is ordained and established as a common law free association trust, greater than unincorporated corporation or partnership to benefit the private free inhabitant individuals and the public governmental persons. The United States, in Congress assembled, government was and is an association confederation that evolved into greater than became involved with a confederal, federal corporation around 1791 being a subordinate and annexed business trust of the general United States government. This federal corporation government of and in the United States is and was completely distinct from any and all municipal, lat. Muni Capio, Incorporation, and the post-1933 administrative government of the United States. The subordinate and annexed United States 1791 federal corporation government went bankrupt between 1929-1934. However, the sovereign association of the general United States government did not nor did its beneficiaries. Since the banking holiday of 1933 and the FDR's administration the administrative, greater than agency, government of the United States, in the United Nations, has and is acting as a type receiver and ministerial office. For our purposes there are three, three United States governments. A. The 1772 to the present sealed United States general unincorporated con federal government according to the law of nations, in the family of nations, and so written in the preamble and articles 1-7 of the Constitution of the United States of America. This sovereign government cannot be sued, freehold. b. The 1791 federal corporation government of the United States that went bankrupt between 1929-1933. This subordinate and annexed government had some association with the League of Nations. This corporation is considered a person, and all persons can be sued. All 13th and 14th Amendment citizens, since the Emancipation Proclamation, became saleable, merchantable, for the bankruptcy of 1929-33 and are listed as natural resources, copyhold. c. The fourth branch government of post-1933 aka the Agency of the United States, i.e., the Administrative Government of the United States, in the United Nations, and with its Great Seal Eagle and Egyptian Pyramid. This administrative ministerial government is in power, and with some color for sure, of receivership, leasehold. 1. Sovereign United States Government, Family of Nations, Confederation. 2. Corporate Government Annexed to the United States, League of Nations, Confederal. 3. Administrative Government in and of the United States, United Nations, Federal. 5. The Constitution of the United States of America, Preamble and Articles 1-7 is the will of the people of the United States and is a contract with their trustee in the trust performance and legal requirements. Both it and the mission states preamble establishes and includes the supreme law of the land.